In studio, by the way, our guest is uh, Jim Barnhart. He is uh, county commissioner. I think we can call them now. Uh, yes, thank you very members. much for that. And, yeah. and we appreciate that, too. It's easier on me. And you are not running for re-election. Why is that? Um, well, I tell you, I'm 74 currently. Next year, I'll be 75. It's kind of it's funny how that works. It's a progression. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I've been doing this since November of 1972. That's mm -hmm. when I came. I was hired by the Berkeley County Health Department as a sanitarian. Kind of ironic. They're sponsoring this show. Indeed. But, uh, and I worked for them for 40 years. And I became, I succeeded uh, Bill Stubblefield as county commissioner, county councilman, the county commissioner. And uh, this is my second term. I've been doing this for 51 years. That's entirely enough. Time to stop. <laughs> 51 years of anything except marriage is entirely enough. And I'm really looking forward to getting out of it. It's been great. It's been fun. As Bill knows, there's a certain level of satisfaction that goes a along lot. with Very it. Very much so, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, but two terms, I think, is quite sufficient for anybody. And uh, I just feel it's time for me to see you around, fellas. Your last term, you ran against Bill, in fact, as an independent. Yes. yes. Yeah, Jim were, beat me. There was no Democrat, I don't think, that actually filed. No, uh, no. Right? No. Uh, yes, there yeah. was. Yeah, there he was, was uh, the, the minister, he, the... Uh, uh, the, the, the NCAA. P yeah, the Ph.D. Uh, from Texas. And yeah. I've forgotten his name. Is he still in the area? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Zach. Was it Zach something? Yeah, it could well be. Yeah. yeah. All right. I, yeah. I must admit, I can't. I didn't remember that, but I, I do remember you. Were the, I think you were the second leading vote getter than Bill. I, I was. But the the operative word is second. Second. <laughs> <That's> right, <yeah. laughs> no horseshoes. No horseshoes. I tell you, exactly right, yeah. I have never worked as hard. As I did running for well, the first time was the hardest because yeah. you know yeah. everybody we were all there was quite a number of candidates and we were all unknown mm -hmm. to the voters. Uh, I worked harder then, but the two times that I ran was uh, probably the hardest I've yeah. ever worked. Yeah. And the wife would say, well, "How many signs did you put up today?" And I'd say, "Oh, five, five. I said, "Honey." It's not a matter of sticking a sign in somebody's front yard and then taking off, <laughs> running away. Yeah. You got to stop and talk to them, you know. Yeah. Well, yeah, and that's interesting because when Bill would come on, Bonnie would say, "Bill, how, how many signs did the butler put up for you today?" Bill <laughs> <laughs> yeah, would go, "Geez, <laughs> how many? What's the number?" I put up all my own signs. Yeah. I took all my own signs down. And, and to set the record straight, I did as well. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but but Jim's making a good point, uh, especially running countywide race. Uh, you uh, as, as you get closer to the end, I think it becomes more uh, more obvious to you. You go to bed at night thinking of the many, many, many things you should have done during the day. Oh, you yeah. didn't get around to do it. You <laughs> wake up in the morning thinking of the thousands of things you need to do for that day. And there's a disconnect. You cannot possibly hmm. do as much as you think you should do uh, to run to win election, so it's it's a and you have exactly right, and it's you tough. have no idea how good or bad you're doing. Exactly right, no there's nothing to go by, <laughs> no <laughs> measurable right. until yeah. the election day itself. Because only the people you talk to uh, the most are your friends, and they keep telling you how well. Oh you're yeah, doing. <laughs> and those guys on the other side of the street that don't you don't ever, know. <laughs> don't ever listen to your friends. <laughs> Jim, I want, I want to go back a couple of years because I want to talk about the situation where Elaine Mock left. The council, Dan Delier came on on a vote, and then Elaine went to county clerk. Yep. You were yep. the you were the I lone. I remember that. Yes, you were, you were the lone <laughs> no vote. Yes, I was. Okay, and after we saw the aftermath of what happened, Elaine obviously ran into issues with the law. That was Elaine being Elaine. And then we had uh, election issues that uh, took place where there was a lot of unhappiness with the way the election was conducted locally. Everybody else voted yes. You voted no. You voted no for a reason. I don't know what that was because we tried to get you on the show and we couldn't. What was the reason why you voted no? Well, and talk they, to me about that time. Remember, there were four motions made during that time. Mm -hmm. The first motion was uh, for John Small to retire. I voted for that because John needed to retire before he died so he could get the retirement benefits and Julia as well. So that was important. 
So yeah, I voted for that. And then it was Elaine being off the county commission. I said no. And then it was, uh, well, say Elaine off the county commission. I guess it was Dan being on, on the county commission. So it was three. On the county commission. Of course, I voted no. And my reason was, as just before that happened, Morgan County went through the same thing. Uh, and they had applications given to the public for the interested people to become a county commissioner. And that was how I felt it should have been done in Berkeley County. It's like, hey, let's take a little time, take a look at candidates, because there might be some good candidates out there, and go over the candidates and make a decision at that time. But they were in an awful hurry to complete this process and I was the only one that voted no. You know, Jim, there'd been a, you mentioned Morgan County. There'd been a president in Berkeley County uh, a couple, three years before with the assessor's office. Yeah. And we chose to appoint someone temporarily an, with, with the full understanding that individual would not run for election. We did not mm -hmm. want to put someone in an advantageous position. So, yeah, yeah I, and I agree with your vote on uh, Oh, yeah, well, uh, uh, quite a number of people did, not that it made any difference. Um, in in the vote, but and you can like you said, you saw what happened. Mm -hmm. Elaine was very good at organizing the historical records of the of the courthouse. She got in there and had holes and elbows and cleaned that place up, um, threw away stuff, discovered stuff, that all that sort of stuff. But as far as Financing and voting, she did not have a lot of experience. So, as I said, you were the lone no vote. Yes. And the feedback that we got from our audience was very vocal in support of your no vote. Well, that's, that's I'm, I'm glad of that. We talked to the four other commissioners who voted yes. Eddie said he deeply regretted his vote. Yes, and um, he, he told me that too. Which, and in fairness um, to Eddie. And, and Dan actually yeah. was not a commissioner, yeah. so while well, he was on the show, he couldn't comment as a commissioner yeah. at the time because he, he wasn't in on the vote. Um, but you voted no, but you didn't speak publicly about why you voted no. Why is that? Uh, well, I, I just made my opinion known that this is not right, but it, it failed. It went on, and uh, you know, I just, just dropped it. Nothing I could do about it. It was all said and done, so, you know, and I didn't feel the need to expand on it. And in fairness to Eddie, I think that was Eddie's very first meeting. It was. So he was brand new coming in, and so he was faced with a, uh, uh, a decision that he, he regretted, but it was his first meeting. Yeah, and I have nothing to say, yeah. no, nothing to comment on Eddie's decision. Eddie's Eddie, yeah, that's yeah. his, that's his yeah, decision. Yeah, that's his decision. I, I think because of how many people supported your decision, I think they would have loved to have heard from you well, during that time. I would have loved to have heard from you from, at that yeah, time. I, I felt it did, really made no difference in the long run. And, you know, time will tell and time told. And, uh, you know, it, it happened. And, you know, Dan, he, he was a good commissioner or councilman. Uh, he was beaten in the next election when Steve Catlett, yeah. you know, the the – Bulldozer known as Steve Catlett just bulldozed his way into <laughs> election. So, so we've given Steve a new nickname that way. <laughs> bulldozer. That the bulldozer. That was impressive. I tell you. Well, like people I, say, every, talk about name recognition. Everybody's popular until you cast a vote on something, right? Oh man, they, you know they always said my name recognition got me elected first time. Well, Steve's re name recognition got him elected this time. Let me tell you, that was that wasn't fair. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Steve's had great recognition, but also Steve had something like thirty-five or forty years yeah, of had, known mm -hmm. productivity. Yeah, he and, had as much uh, he, time in the yeah. parks and rec as yeah. I had at the health department. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people knew who Steve yeah. Catler was. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Jim Barnhart is a county commissioner. He's retiring from the commission after this uh, next election cycle, not running for re-election. Matt Miller. Jim, when you initially ran, what was kind of the interest? What led you to say, I would like to be a leader here in Berkeley County as a commissioner? 
Well, the first thing was Bill Stubblefield decided not to run again. <laughs> that was a big that was a big decision. Uh, if he'd have ran again, I wouldn't have entered okay. the race. But since it was a new race uh, and everybody was on equal footing, mm -hmm. I thought, well, why not? Uh, I've got I had 40 years in at yeah. the health department, um, and I thought, you know, the county commission is just the next step up from what I've been doing here for 40 years. And I know I can do it. And I've got, at that time, I had the name recognition from being with the health department mm -hmm. and interacting with the citizens of Berkeley County for all those years. And I had a pretty good rapport with the citizens of Berkeley County because mm -hmm. of my feeling that the health department should be responsive to the people of Berkeley County rather than uh, an agency that, you know, tried to regulate everything. It was like, because I was taught, you know, that you should help the citizens of Berkeley County, not regulate the citizens of Berkeley County. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's why I decided to run. Do you feel like you were able to do just that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I tell you, and, and, and I'm sure Bill will agree, uh, it's a lot of fun being a county commissioner. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you get to meet people, you get to talk to people, you get to listen to people and do stuff for people. Mm -hmm. And that really makes a difference. Looking back, Jim, you've 12 years, 11 years now, we'll have yeah. 12 and step down. Uh, what is your, what accomplish, accomplishment are you most proud of? Um, you know, the, the parks and rec thing is what I'm really looking forward to. Yeah. And, and it's continuing on with the, uh, of course, the, the Inwood Park, uh, we're trying to get money from Senator Manchin to to improve that because you know you're talking a couple million dollars to mm -hmm. to build this thing out, um, and Sportsman's Paradise is a potential uh, place because you know we have no river public river access in Berkeley County, and this would make a great public access if we can get public access. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, if you've ever been in Sportsman's Paradise, it takes a four-wheel drive to go up and down that hill. It really does, yeah. And good credit is where credit is. Deborah Hammond's the one that started that yeah. ball rolling, well, so she gets yeah. a lot. Of I mean, there's that. been a lot of yeah. people involved yeah. in it. Uh, right. Alan yeah. Davis and Deborah Hammond yeah. And, yeah. and Doug yeah. Copenhaver yeah. and you know, uh, all these people. And uh, But it's something we really have to continue working on as a commission to – you know, get more recreational opportunities in Berkeley County. Exactly. Now, you're also in the water district for 11, 12 years, were yes. you not? Yes. Okay. And there's been quite a bit of progress in that front as well. Well, uh, Procter & Gamble kind of was the incentive for most of that progress because mm -hmm. they happened to build Procter & Gamble in the dead zone of the water system, the space equally between South Berkeley and the river plant. And so that area did not have water service. And here comes this plant that wants a million gallons a day. And the water district had to hit the ground running to get services to them. And they're still working on getting service in that area with, you know, the new tower at the, the airport and working to get water across the interstate. And now and then they discovered, wait a minute, South Berkeley, Lefevre Springs, that plant's 60 years old. It's got technology that expired years ago, you know, and now they got to build a new plant. Well, that's $30, 40000000 million, you know, and then, you know, upgrade the river plant to get another million gallons a day out of the river plant. And then South Berkeley, as you well know, Lefevre Springs is the water uh, – Availability at Lafayette Springs is dropping because of the drought. Mm. It's down to about a thousand gallons a minute, and the lowest it's ever been is 800 gallons a minute in so, 2002. Yeah. yeah, so it's you know, what are they going to do? Uh, of course, the good thing is all the wells that they've drilled and you know, Glimna Forest, the woods, um, Springfield, uh, or whatever, called, Springdale, uh, up at the uh. Uh, spring spring mills area yeah. those are only down about a foot so the wells are holding 
And there's another about Lefevre Springs. Its its source material is very close to uh, source area, very close to the Highway 81. Yeah, yeah. And if there was yeah, ever the recharge a, area is yeah, vulnerable. If, if there's yeah, very very vulnerable. If there's ever a chemical spill on yeah. Highway 81, all of the south uh, southern part of uh, Berkeley yeah. County could be yeah. at risk. And yep. uh, they can't at the present time supply Berkeley South Berkeley County for the river plant because you can't get water from A to B because water won't go through pipes at the rate that you need to feed it through pipes. They have lift stations uh, or pressure stations. There's one there at Pikeside where uh, Barney's treatment plant used to be, pushing water to the south, but that doesn't quite doesn't quite do it. Mm-hmm. So they're, you know, they're working hard on, you know, trying to expand the water, some bigger pipes, more pipes, stuff like that, but that costs money and takes time. Mm-hmm. It does. And uh, Jim Mufflett was on a couple of weeks ago, and you can always look back and say they should have done more, they should have been more aggressive here. But the flip side is they have done a lot with your, you've been on the board. They've yep. done a lot in the last several years, and we've been, we're in a much better position now than we would have been without the aggressive yeah. approach of the water district. South Berkeley is the first public service district yeah. in West Virginia. Yeah. And, you know, they've added, you know, the Hedgesville PSD, the Apecan PSD to it and, you know, made the Berkeley County PSD, yeah. and, you know, which was a wonderful idea. Uh, and, you know, taking it to the next step. Yeah. Bill, Bill, you mentioned being in a much better position. But, Jim, when you look at the growth going on right now in Berkeley County, are we in the position we need to be with our water supply or are we still kind of pushing uphill? Now, well, of course we're pushing uphill because – Growth is out distancing the mm-hmm. capacity of the water system, but they're working on the water system. Um, it's funny, growth, I've noticed uh, in the Journal Junction, which is probably not the best news source in the world, but um, it gives you an idea of the, the public's feelings about certain things. Uh, they're screaming that they want the Planning Commission to halt development. Well, the Planning Commission can't halt development. It's not in their bylaws to halt development. They have no power to halt development. So if you've got a a proposed subdivision coming in for for the so-called farm Mm -hmm. and they want to develop 500 lots, well, the Planning Commission can only apply their regulations to that. They can't say, yes, you can, no, you can't. All they can say is, yes, you can if you go by our regulations. So does the commission have say in that, or who I've does? Been, I've been told no, uh, but they maybe if there are certain extraordinary events. So that's one thing I've got to, to check on. Uh, what we got to do is talk to the legislators and tell them to remove that law that says you have to have countywide zoning to enact impact fees. fees. Yeah, yes. impact fees. Now, there is an impact fee on water and sewer. Uh, the, uh, the capacity improvement fee, but that doesn't anywhere cover the cost but of anything. Matt, going to your point, we've been very, very fortunate that the growth has been targeted along 81. Mm-hmm. If we'd had the same amount of growth back in Back Creek Valley or uh, east of 81 uh, toward the Jefferson County line that we've seen along Highway 81, we would be in a lot more trouble than we are right now. So we've been fortunate. But Jim's right. Without zoning, there is limit to what the yeah. county commission can do. The only zoning we have other than spot zoning is water and sewer. Where you got water and sewer, Katie bar the door. Where you don't have water and sewer, like out in our area where Bill lives and where mm-hmm. I live, it's virtually unchanged yeah. because the, you know, developers may have bought farm, like the Harry Yo farm down there on Files Crossroads, but it just sits there as a farm because he can't develop it until he gets water and sewer, which may come to that area because he may take it over from Blairton and the golf course and coming from that direction. But the question with Blairton, like uh, the recharge of these water sources, yeah. and it looks like a lot of water when you look across the quarry, a lot of water there, but there's no recharge. No. So once you pull it down, you're well, out of luck. And, and mm. they have attempted to, to get water from Blairton Quarry. or Blair. Not serious because we well, did, it, it, we did it a water in, budget study. Yes, it yeah. was in, in, in the past uh, mm-hmm. from the Peckin uh, PSD used to get it from uh, the at Four Mile Woods, and of course um, 
South Berkeley has a the quarry there at uh, um, off of uh, yeah. 51, uh, and they're actively looking for water yeah. there, yeah. Uh, but that's in the future. What's going to happen, Jim, when you hang the spurs up? What are you going to do? Enjoy myself, you know. <laughs> I'm, I'm on 24 acres. I've got a nice garden. Not this year because, for some reason, it decided not to rain at all. If it would have, the bunnies and the deer would have eaten it anyway. <laughs> I've had a terrible trouble with skunks this year. I don't know. I mean, they've been. I wish I'd have known that before you came in. <laughs> <laughs> I could have brought them, brought them with me. Um, uh, the deer and the turkeys are doing fine. But uh, the skunks have been attacking for some reason. I don't yeah. know what's going on. A very quick skunk story. My dog caught one a couple of years or so ago. We were prepared for it. We knew we had some de skunk that we got. As soon as she came back with froth in the mouth, we took her in the shower, scrubbed her down, came out. Sm she smelled beautifully, just pristine, <laughs> until she started breathing. <laughs> it, was, it was skunk odor, and that lasted for six weeks. <laughs> Jim, thank you very much for coming, and we well, appreciate sure. it. sure, I enjoyed it. And uh, when, when is your last day in office, by the way? December 31st next year. So you got all the way till 2024. Yeah. Yeah, you got plenty of time to come back. Jim Barnhart, <laughs> without skunks, thank you. Yeah.